Good morning! Today we are reading the story called Jose, Born to Dance. It's by Susan Reach and illustrated by Raul Cologne. Born to Dance, Jose. In 1908, a baby boy was born in Culiacan, Mexico, kicking like a roped steer. Bam, bam, bam. His name was Jose Limon. When Jose was a toddler, Mama used to take him to his grandmother's house for breakfast. The pet canary sang to him while he ate. Trillia wheat, trillia wheat. Surrounded by flowers, Jose feasted on mango and papaya, pineapple and banana, sweet rolls and eggs. His mouth watered as grandmother whisked the hot chocolate with her molinillo. When the hot chocolate was cool enough to drink, Jose gulped it down. Sometimes, Papa took Jose to the theater where Papa worked as a musician. Jose loved to watch the dancers on the stage. The Cancan dancers lifted their petticoats and kicked their legs. Ooh la la! The flamenco dancers flipped their skirts and clicked their heels. Si, si, si! The ballet dancers leaped into the air, raising their arms high above their heads. They seemed to fly. Ah! One afternoon, Papa took Jose to the Corrida de Toros. In the bullfight ring, a torero swirled his red cloak to anger the black bull. Ole, ole, ole. The bull pawed the ground. It ran straight toward the bullfighter, its head down and its eyes blazed. Jose gripped Papa's hand. Later that night, when Mama tucked Jose into bed, her sweet voice echoed in the darkness. Sora, sora, so, sora, so. That night, Jose dreamed of the bullfight. One spring day when Jose was five, he saw government soldiers marching into the street. A civil war had broken out in Mexico. Jose slug a stick over his shoulder and marched through the house. Uno, dos, uno, dos. The next day at breakfast, shots rang out. The rebels had attacked their town. Surrounded by fighting, Jose's family hid in the cellar for three days and three nights. Months passed and the war ranged on. Safety lay across the border in the United States. Perhaps Papa could find a job there. Jose's family took a train to Nogles, close to the border. Soldiers sat on top of the train, their guns at the ready. The train crawled through the hot desert. As the sun set, Jose heard the sound of an accordion, a slow, mournful song. Oh, sonador. For two years, Jose and his family lived in Nogales, waiting and waiting for permission to enter the United States. Finally, Papa's work permit arrived, stamped with an official seal. They packed their bags and set out across the northern frontier. Adios, Mexico. At Jose's new school, the children gathered around the teacher to read aloud from their books. When Jose read, the other children laughed at his poor English. At first, Jose cried. Then, he stamped his foot in fierce determination. Pum! I will learn this language better than any of you, he said to himself, though it seemed nearly impossible. But within three years, Jose could speak English with confidence. He was quick to learn new words and translated for Mama wherever they went. Carmesi Radiente Liberación, Crimson Radiant Liberation. By sixth grade, Jose had become known for his colorful drawings. Among his many younger brothers and sisters, he was famous for his pictures of trains. Everyone thought he would become an artist, but Jose loved music too. As a teenager, he practiced the piano at all hours of the day and night. When his fingers flew, his spirit soared. Ah. After Jose finished high school in Los Angeles, he went to work in a factory. All day long, he took tiles from one wheelbarrow and loaded them into another. At night, he dreamed of painting and drawing. He dreamed of living in New York among the artists, but he didn't know if Papa could manage without him. Jose waited and brewed and argued with himself. Finally, after a year, he made up his mind. Papa, he announced, I'm going. 
Adios, Jose. Farewell. He headed east across the continent, 2,462 miles. When Jose reached New York, the shimmering city towered above him, marble, stone, brick, and steel. Jose floated down the sidewalk. He would become a great artist, un artista grandizo y magnifico. He would fill his sketchbooks with drawings like none the world had ever seen. He took a job as a janitor, scooping ashes out of a coal furnace and hauling garbage cans to the curb. But as winter wore on, a cold loneliness settled over Jose. He missed his family, far away in sunny California. Discouraged, he wandered the halls of the great museums, Manet, Renoir, and Picasso, he thought. Perhaps they had already painted everything. His drawings would never compare. The music in his heart fell silent. New York is a cemetery, he said, a jungle of stone. Jose put away his drawings. He felt sad and lost. How could he be an artist without an art? He wanted to give a gift to the world, but he didn't know what it could be. One day, Jose's friend Charlotte invited him to a dance concert. The dancer twisted his body and leaped into the air. Ay! The dance lit a fire in Jose's soul. Ideas exploded in his mind. I do not want to remain on this earth unless I can learn to do what this man is doing, he said. A few days later, Jose stepped into a dance studio for the first time. As soon as the pianist began to play, the sound of the music carried Jose away. He swooped, he stretched, he swirled, and then he flew. Ah, la danza será mi vida. I embrace the dance. From then on, Jose took classes from teachers Doris Humphrey and Charles Weedman nearly every day. Dripping with sweat, he struggled with a stiff and stubborn body. And at night, he hobbled home, his muscles sore and aching. Six weeks later, he made his debut, performing for the first time. As he waited to go on stage, he felt shy and nervous. All those people in the audience would be watching him. But once he heard the thundering applause, his spirits lifted. That night, I tasted undreamed of exaltation, humility, and triumph, he said. Ankles and feet, knees and hips, chest and arms, head and neck, up and down and back and forth, and in and out. Jose Limon wove himself into a dancer. He became what he was born to be. For 11 years, Jose studied and danced with Doris and Charles. He learned to make his muscles sing. He learned to move his bones every which way. He learned to flow and float and fly through space with steps smooth as silk. He learned to be fierce like a bullfighter, ole, strong like a soldier, uno, dos, uno, dos, and proud like a king, pum. He learned to make dances sweet as birdsong, trilala tweet, hot as a desert sun, si, si, sad as broken dreams, oh, soñador, loving as a mother's lullaby floating on a Mexican breeze. Sora, sora, so, sora, so. In time, Jose became a world famous choreographer and toured the globe with his own dance company. For 40 years, with bare feet and broad shoulders, he graced the concert stage. From New York to Mexico City and London to Buenos Aires, he danced for presidents and princesses, builders and bricklayers, bankers and bus drivers, fiddlers and firemen. And each night before the curtain rose, he whispered to himself, make me strong so I can give. Bravo, bravo, bravo. The end.